Welcome to Easy LA Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be learning on Form 2 Mathematics and our topic for today is Angle Properties of a Circle. So we are going to be looking at the angle that is subtended by a chord on the circumference and an angle subtended on the circumference by a diameter. So we're going to see these two, a chord and a diameter and how they behave when they uh, form an angle subtended on the circumference and the difference in how we can derive that specific angle. So that is what we are going to do for today. So let's begin. So first of all, we're going to recap what we said before. What's an arc chord segment of a circle? Remember when you are looking at the area of a circle, we mentioned some of these uh, definitions. So you can go back also and check that out as we did before. So an arc is any part of the circumference, that is what is referred to as the arc. So we have the major arc and the minor arc. So if you look at the blue lines and the pink lines, the blue line is the minor and the pink line is the major. So these are the lines on the circumference of a circle. Those are the ones that are referred to as arcs. And then we have now the chord. So a chord is a line joining any two points on the circumference and a chord divides a circle into two regions. And these regions are usually referred to as segments as we said before. So we can have a chord running uh, across a circle to the circumference forming a major and a minor segment. So you can see we have chord AB in this case and this AB forms two segments. We have the major which is white and the minor segment which is blue. Go back and check how we are able to calculate the area of this major and minor segments in the previous video that we did. And so the first thing that we talked about in the beginning was getting to know that the angle subtended by a diameter to the circumference of a circle is always equal to 90. So let's, let's prove that. So we have this case. So we want to prove that this angle here is going to be 90 degrees. So we are going to drop a line or a, a, a line from P to O, as you can see in the second uh, circle. So when we do that, remember O, O, A, O is going to be equal to O, P or P, O. This is because they are, they are diameters. They actually radiuses on the circumference from the center of the circle. That means they are equal. If they are equal, then it means they are base angles of this triangle formed by these two radiuses are equal. So you say angle OAP is equal to angle OPA. So this angle here is equal to this angle here. And the fact that they are equal is because they are, they are being formed by two equal sizes of radiuses all right and then next we are going to take we can take this one as our angle x and this as also our angle x since they are the same so the same also applies when this line has been dropped line po has been dropped on this triangle so this means also po which is a radius is also equals to o o b they have to be equal because they are both radiuses so that tells you that angle OPB is equal to the angle OBP. So this angle here is going to be equal to this angle. So we'll call these angles Y and these angles Y. So this, you can see how it forms the different angles. So we can say, and remember the angles in a triangle usually forms 180 degrees. So we can say that X, angle X plus angle X plus angle Y plus angle Y is equal to 180 degrees. So since the X's are the same, so it becomes 2X plus 2Y is equal to 180 degrees. So this is the same because 2 is common in both cases. It becomes 2 is equal to x plus y is equal to 180. If we divide 2 both sides, we are going to get that x plus y is equal to 90 degrees. 
So these two angles, if you add them up together, they become, they form 90 degrees. Right, so I hope you've been able to see that. Let's look at the second now property. We said that the angle subtended by an arc of a circle is usually twice. We've already calculated the angle A. So this angle subtended by the arc of the circle is twice the angle that is uh, subtended at the center of the circle. So let's prove that as well. So first of all, the first thing that you're going to drop, we are going to drop a line CD, and this CD is going to pass through the center of the circle. So what this does, remember, this forms a radius PO, OC, these are two radiuses now which are equal. That makes the angle OPQ, OPC, to be equal to angle OCP. So we will call this angle X and we call this one angle X because they are both equal. The same thing also affects the other half of the, the other triangle. Since the moment we drop the line COD, remember line CO is also a diameter and line OQ is a diameter. So these two are diameters. So they form equal angles at the base. So it means angle OCQ is equal to angle OQC. So you call this Y and this Y as it's indicated in the diagram. So I hope you can see that. So if you look closely at this, there's a point here, C, O, and D. There's a line that is going through uh, uh, the center of the circle. And if you look at this point here, this line, we know that angle, uh, an angle on a line adds up to 180 degrees. This angle here is 180. So that tells you that if you look, so if you look at this line as you were saying earlier on, there is this angle here. There are two angles. There is angle D or C that is for the initial for this a triangle this side and then the same on the other side. So if you look at this other side, you'll notice this angle here, there is a line that is falling here. This is what we are looking for at the moment. So we know that this other angle on top, if you add X plus X plus this angle here, it's going to add up to 100, uh, 180 degrees. That tells you this angle here plus X plus X is going to be 180. That tells you that this angle here is X plus X. Same applies to the second, this angle here, x plus x. Same applies to the second triangle that is formed, that is triangle C, O, Q, that is uh, formed by dropping C, O, D. So it tells you that for this angle to be completely full, we need this half of the angle, this angle here. We add up to this angle, it adds up to 180. But we know since there is a triangle C, OQ, which is this an, an ang the angle inside that is OC, QOC plus the angle Y plus the angle Y will give us 180. That tells you now this is the same as this angle here is Y plus Y. This angle here is Y plus Y. So you see we are adding up having angle, angle P or Q to be X plus x plus y plus y. So this angle, angle P O Q is going to be x plus x plus y plus y. So this is the same as 2x plus 2y which is the same as 2 into bracket x plus y. And remember initially our x and y are up here. So this tells you angle PCQ and angle OQ, OPQO, the relationship is that this angle 
here is uh, the ang this the angle at the center that is P O Q is twice the angle at the circumference which is angle P C Q. So this means let's write the final conclusion. So angle P C Q is equals to twice P O Q. So P or Q or this angle here at the center of the circle is twice the angle subtended at the circumference by an arc. So that is basically what we are concluding in this case. So let's look at an example. So find the values of X, Y, and Z in the figure if O is the center of the circle and angle A BC is 30. So we said this angle here and y, angle that, angle A, B, C, and angle A, O, C as this relationship. Angle A, O, C is twice angle A, B, C. And angle A, B, C already we have been given is 30. So it means angle y is going to be 30 times 2, which gives us. 60. And then if we've gotten 60 degrees as angle y, and remember x and y will add up to 360 because it forms like an angle at the center. So it means it's 360 minus 60, which will give us 300. This is 300. So remember angle Z and X also is related in the same way we have angle A, B, C and angle A, O, A, Y, A, O, C or the angle Y and 30. So it means that angle Z is equals to 300 divided by 2 is less that way. So this becomes angle Z becomes 150 degrees. Hope you've understood. So one more time just to recap. So angle A, B, C and angle A, O, C are related in that. Just like what we discussed. Angle A, O, C is twice angle A, B, C. So it means this angle Y here is going to be twice 30. Which is 30 times 2 which gives us 60. And since X and Y are angles that for are the center, it means if you add up these two angles, they're going to add up to 360. So it means that angle X is going to be 300 because it's going to be 360 minus 60 degrees. And then finally, angle Z and Y are related in the same way we had between 30 and 60. So it means angle Z is going to be 300 divided by 2 to get angle Z, which is going to be 150 degrees. So I hope you have been able to understand. So check out the next lesson. You're going to be doing a bit of practice on the same property so that you can be able to understand more. Check out more questions also on the app. I'll see you in the next lesson.